If I bought $100 worth of Bitcoin back in February of 2011, that would be worth today $4.6 million. Yeah. And you know what's also really interesting? You can also buy CryptoKitties on the blockchain. See right here, look at this, all these cats. All these cats, these are digital cats. These are literally pictures of kittens on the blockchain. Bitcoin is also built on the blockchain. So if you're confused already, that's a good thing because I was also confused, but I figured it out. And we're gonna answer this question together. Bitcoin reaching a market cap of more than $1 trillion. The asset itself is creating nothing. Where is it going? It's probably going to 100, then 150, then 200,000. So the first question I guess we need to ask ourselves is, is there anything in life that you've done that you've truly regretted? Like really, really regretted. So it's probably not as bad as Laszlo Hanyak and what he did back in 2010. This is Laszlo Hanyak of Jacksonville and posted that he would pay someone 10,000 bitcoins for a couple of pizzas. Yeah. What, would it, what would it be worth today? In case you were wondering how much that would be worth today, that would be worth $480 million. It's crazy because his actions created Bitcoin Pizza Day, which is on May 22nd every year now, celebrating what Laszlo did. The reason I bring up this story is because it actually best describes what Bitcoin is. It's a payment processor, or as the white paper says, a purely peer-to-peer -peer version of electronic cash that can allow online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without going through a financial institution. If you're really confused, don't worry. White papers tend to be really dense. So let's break this down even more. Let's say I want to transfer money to someone in Japan. Generally, how I would do this is either by going through a bank or something that we all know, Western Union. I would probably walk into a Western Union, give them some money, and then they would wire that money to another branch in Japan, have that process, have that be approved. And then a few days after, my friend in Japan would have that money. But there's some issues with this. For one, it takes forever, right? It takes a few days for the money to get from my wallet, my bank account to his bank account. Another issue, which is the biggest reason why Bitcoin exists is that Western Union or a bank is just one centralized location, meaning that it has to be approved by one thing, this one entity, before it can go through to someone else's bank account. But with Bitcoin, you can transfer money from one person to another instantly without having any middle person, no bank. How do you do this? Because of the peer-to-peer -peer network. Essentially what a peer-to-peer -peer network is, it's essentially a bunch of nodes, servers, computers, let's say, for simplicity's sake, around the globe. Let's look at Lasko's story again. He decided to use his 10,000 Bitcoins to buy two pizzas. So essentially he decided to transfer 10,000 Bitcoins from his wallet and sent it to another wallet, let's say the pizza shop that he was buying the pizza from. What happened was, that 10,000 Bitcoin was sent out to the peer-to-peer -peer network, got verified to make sure that he does have the 10,000 Bitcoin, and then almost instantly that was sent to the pizza shop. Once the pizza shop received the 10,000 Bitcoins, he decided to ship those pizzas to his house. And this is really powerful, right? If you look at back in 2008, when banks were failing us, they were abusing our money, they were taking our money and then betting on our money. And the poop hit the fan, you know, essentially a lot of bad things happened. The stock market, the economy crumbled. But with Bitcoin, What's really powerful is that there's no bank involved in terms of transacting money from one person to another. So you have no chance of banks screwing us over. There's no chances of being hacked. And that's really powerful. That's, that's the biggest reason why there's a lot of excitement around Bitcoin. But now we need to also look at CryptoKitties. It's a game created by a Canadian tech company and built into the cryptocurrency Ethereum. Users buy cats like Bitcoins and can breed or trade them. Yes, I'm scratching my head too. As I was saying earlier, you can buy a kitty, a digital kitty on the blockchain. You know, some of these are actually around $9. Some of them go for a million dollars. And you might be asking yourself, Herschel, that's crazy. And I would agree, it is very crazy. But what I'm, what I'm showing you is essentially a digital collectible. And for the first time, thanks to the blockchain, that is possible. And here's the thing. With the internet, ever since the internet was started, anything that's digital that you have downloaded, let's say it's music, pictures, videos, whatever it is, it's essentially a copy, right? You're getting a copy from another copy, and then that copy comes from another copy, which creates a lot of abundance. But thanks to the blockchain, you're now able to have digital scarcity. And anytime there's scarcity, that's when you get a lot of value. 
For example, this cat is selling for over a million dollars. Again, crazy, I know, but there's something to digital scarcity that's really exciting. So you might be asking yourself, how is this all possible? So let's take a look at this. So what's actually happening is that when I'm buying this, I'm buying the only image of this cat, meaning that all the attributes that you see here, which, you know, it's leopard pattern, it has a certain eye color, it has certain eye shape, accent color, fur, all these attributes, they're all unique to this cat, meaning that there's no other copy just like that, right? Which is really exciting. So all these attributes are then written in a smart contract. These are called ERC721 smart tokens. I know it's a mouthful. I almost rambled that off a little bit. So let's say that again, ERC721 token. What this token is, it's a unique token. So each token has unique attributes. So CryptoKitties.co, the company, decided to create these tokens and each token would have different attributes or, you know, different attributes to this kitty. And now they're selling them and they're making a lot of money. So good for them. So the next question we need to really ask ourselves and really answer is what is blockchain? You know, you've heard me say blockchain a few times now and we need to answer this. We need to understand this fully for us to fully understand the popularity of Bitcoin because blockchain is the foundation to all of this. So let's talk about it. Blockchain applies to so many industries. Anytime you are taking what's a manual process today and making it self-service, there's an opportunity for blockchain. So blockchain is essentially what it says, right? It's a chain of blocks. And even with its simple definition, I've been very confused by this definition for a very long time. And I would get really upset when people would tell me like, Hirsch, it's a chain of blocks, duh. And it just didn't make sense to me. But I've boiled it down, I've simplified it a little bit so it makes more sense to my head. So let's talk about that. The way I simplified it in my head was I first looked at a physical ledger, right? At some point, we've all seen something like this, right? It's a super old school way of collecting information. So in each row, you have the ability to write down whatever information that seems helpful to you. So here's the problem with this method. It's first off, there's only one copy of it. And second, there's a possibility, a high possibility of it being tampered. So what's happening is that the blockchain is pretty much taking this physical ledger and putting it online. Now there's thousands of these ledgers that can confirm with each other that, hey, this information is correct. Not one person can, you know, tamper with the data. Going back to the example of me sending one Bitcoin to my friend in Japan, what's happening is that that transaction is happening. It gets verified, right? And that transaction it then is created into a block. It's a ledger, right? It's a block that says, Herschel sent one Bitcoin to a friend in Japan. After it's created into a block, there's no way for it to be changed, no way to be altered, no way to be tampered with. So my friend can't come back to me and be like, hey, you didn't send me one Bitcoin because it's all in the blockchain. Bitcoin is built off of blockchain, but there's other tools, there's other things that you can build off of blockchain that can solve some of the world's biggest problems. And to me personally, that's what got me really excited is that we can do some good things with blockchain. Human trafficking is believed to be the third largest criminal enterprise on earth. Reportedly declining faster than that of any time in human history. And millions, millions of people have been affected by extreme weather like hurricanes and floods. As I was researching for this video, I picked up the book, Blockchain Revolution. And in that book, they mentioned that 1.5 billion people live on this planet without a birth certificate. The consequences of not having a birth certificate is very intense. You can't get proper access to healthcare, jobs, chances of getting traffic. You know, tying back to CryptoKitties, if you can create CryptoKitties based on just, you know, these unique tokens and each token has a unique attribute, then why can you not create identification tokens where each person, let's say for me, I have my own personal token 
with my birth date, my identification number, social security number, my passport number, all the things that are necessary. I can just put them in that token and no one can hack into it. It's mine, I own it, it's powerful. So Blockchain Revolution also talked about another token that is built off of the blockchain. They're called Natural Asset and Commodity Tokens. So up until now, what's been really kind of a, like a downfall of humanity is that things like air, water, carbon, these things have been abused. What this book is talking about and suggesting is that now you can tokenize and reward people based on reducing their carbon emissions. And you can do this through, you know, creating these tokens, having it on the blockchain. And that way we're being incentivized now financially to now not emit as much carbon into the, into the atmosphere. And the same can go with water, the same can go with just other aspects that are destroying our planet. And this is a very abstract idea, but just even the thought of, you know, using this type of technology to even solve probably the biggest challenge we're gonna probably have in 30 years, 50 years from now, game changer. There's no secret that the popularity of Bitcoin is purely, you know, uh, no, I'm not gonna say purely, but majority of the popularity of Bitcoin is coming from just the amount of wealth that's being generated. It's kind of crazy, right? Like a year ago, I remember Bitcoin was at $8,000. The year before that it was around 2000, right? After the big crash. And now it's at 50,000 at the time of this recording. If you're watching this maybe a year or two years from now, maybe 10 years from now, who knows what at what price Bitcoin's gonna be at. But this is what gets me super excited. You know, in this journey of trying to answer this question, my curiosity, why is Bitcoin so popular? Um, I recognized as I you know, did my research that blockchain is way bigger of, a, of an, a thing that is going to do a lot of good things for our world, to the people, and things are gonna become easier and faster. And you know, for me, that's what gets me excited. So as Bitcoin grows in popularity, so will the awareness of blockchain, blockchain blockchain technology. We're probably like 10, 15 years out from seeing what can potentially come out of this, or it could be a complete bust, but anytime there's something that's even remotely willing to, you know, make a dent in the universe, I'm about it, I'm gonna support it. So Bitcoin to the moon, as they say. <laughs> so um, yeah, we have Bitcoin and CryptoKitties now. That's the world we live in. Nice.